Okie dokie, a couple of days ago I posted a video on a car on CSX that had a flat wheel and it damaged about 45 miles track. I've got tons and tons of questions about that video and I also noticed a couple of comments uh, below on the video and I thought I better address this and talk about this a little bit. So. That's what we're gonna do with the video today. We're gonna to talk about flat spots on cars, what causes them, what kind of damage they can cause, and to what equipment that damage is caused, why defect detectors don't pick them up, and why the engineer and conductor and any other crew on the locomotive don't know what's happening. Let's start it. Southern Rail Fan is the place for amazing videos of all types of trains. Southern Rail Fan, subscribe today. A flat wheel, you have to pardon my dirty hands. I've been uh, working on a motorcycle. Uh, this is a truck off of a HO scale model. And we're gonna talk about what causes a flat spot on a wheel. Now, as, as you put this on the track, the wheels roll freely. Smooth, well, if you keep it on the track, they, they roll smoothly. And on the real wheel, on the real uh, prototype, the real thing, these axles just set up here in this uh, kind of a groove there. It has a roller bearing in there and that wheel turns around. Now what causes a flat spot is that car moving while that wheel is still. And what happens is it rubs across that uh, rail and causes a flat spot. Now what I want to do is sand off a little bit of this uh, wheel and see if we can create a flat spot on this car. Alrighty. We've uh, sanded off a little bit of that wheel and uh, it has created a flat spot. I don't know if you can hear that. That is the flat spot hitting the rail. Now, you can hear that come by on a car and, and if you're standing next to the track film and you can hear uh, hear and feel that vibration through the ground. And that vibration is primarily what causes the damage. Uh, if, if you can imagine someone that has a, uh, a flat top guitar or an acoustic guitar and it's set over in the corner of the bedroom or corner of the living room for countless weeks or whatever, and then you pick it up and you start playing it and then a few minutes into playing it, boing, one of the strings pops loose. Well, why didn't that string just pop loose while it was just leaning up against the wall? Well, because of vibration. Now this is what, like I said, what causes the most uh, damage that has to be detected is the vibrations. Once that wheel, that flat spot in that wheel starts hitting, bam, 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 uh, it starts creating a megahertz frequency vibration. Now there, it depends on how big the wheel uh, flat spot is. It's determined by how much, uh, I mean, what peak that vibration would be when it gets to speed. Say, if it got to, if, if the flat spot was at one, you know, was one size, it may reach the maximum megahertz at say 30 miles an hour. And that megahertz is gonna be between, somewhere between 4,000 and 6,000. And with today's welded rail, there's very little forgiveness for that rail to move back and forth. And when you've got uh, movement from weather, you know, it'll draw up or expand with heat and cold. And the combination of that vibration created by that bam, bam, bam of that flat spot is what creates the microscopic cracks in the rail that later on could turn into something larger 
if they're not detected. That's when you have to call in someone, a specializing service like Sperry Rail or somebody like that to come in that can detect those microscopic cracks. Now, another way it can damage if those microscopic cracks are already there and they hit at the same time on that flat spot, of course, it can cause an instant crack in the rail. Now, there is also damage when it goes through. Uh, it could possibly damage greasers. It could possibly damage uh, switch tracks, and it could also possibly damage defect detectors. Now, that's the next thing we're going to talk about is why that was not picked up on a defect detector. Okie dokie, defect detectors, uh, for the most part, pick up heat, dragging equipment. They can also detect uh, the length of the train and how many wheels or axles. They're not set up to detect flat spots in wheels. And one of those reasons goes back to the vibration. For a defect detector to be built to detect flat spots, it would have to be able to detect the vibration to detect how deep that flat spot is on the wheel. Why? Because there are limitations on the railroad that allows certain depth of flat spots in the wheels. So that defect detector would not only have to detect the flat spot, it would have to determine if it's bad enough to be kicked out. You know, you could have a, uh, a flat spot in the wheel and set off every defect detector as it goes by. Now, this is a consequence of PTC and CTC where you just don't have as many railroad locomotives on locomotives. Mm. Railroad employees on the ground. In years past, that was the number one way that you detected a flat spot on a wheel. You either had a trackside uh, gang worker, you had a, a station agent or something like that would get on the radio and say, hey, the number 14 car back here is really pounding the ground. You don't have that nowadays. Now, the next thing I want to address is a couple of comments. People were talking about, uh, you know, the engineer and the conductor should have noticed that and stopped. It was loud and you could feel it in the ground, but those noises and those vibrations do not transmit up into the locomotive. Just imagine they've got the locomotive that they're in, vibrating, running, making all kinds of noise. They've got one behind them, and then however many cars behind that before the defect is. One example I can give you that you can test this theory, next time you're in a car going down the interstate, Either look in the rear view mirror or look out the back windshield and tell me what you can hear about the car behind you. And it's very close. Now imagine having another tractor and trailer behind you and then four more cars. Now what can you hear about that car? Nothing. Now, a couple of comments were, you know, saying that, you know, the employees slammed on the brakes or it, it, it is a possibility, but those flat spots can be created by a number of things. Uh, even hump yards, of course this was on a coal car, but even hump yards can create flat spots on wheels. The retarders that grab the wheels as those cars go down the hump can actually stop the wheel enough for it to drag on the rail, creating a flat spot. There is material that is removed from the rail uh, while that car wheel is stopped, but there's so much more distance on that rail compared to the short amount of distance on that wheel. That's why the wheel winds up with a majority of the material being removed to create a flat spot. Now, by far, we talked about the microscopic cracks. We talked about damage to uh, online features like greasers and, and defect detectors, but the majority of damage is suffered by the truck and the car. 
And when I say truck, that's the, the mechanism underneath the car that holds the axles. Uh, by far, that vibration is multiplied many, many times and sent up through the pin and everything on that car. So most of the time, the damage is on that car. What causes a derail is that wheel, a larger piece of that wheel will crack off and either get hung up in something or uh, foul a switch or something like that. And that's how they derail. Okie dokie, I hope you enjoyed that explanation there and uh, got some uh, questions answered, I guess. Am I taking up for the railroad employees? You betcha. Anyway, uh, we got a regular train video coming out tonight with the return of M653, so be sure to catch that one and uh, I'll see you next time.